Yesterday, we watched the uh, SpaceX test launch of Starship, Starship Test Flight 5, where they, the Mechazilla Tower caught the booster, which is crazy. Our planet creates a magnetic field that shields us. That's actually what creates the aurora. So when you see like the northern lights, the aurora borealis, yeah. that's because of the rays from the sun bouncing off of our magnetic field. Isn't that cool? On Jupiter and Saturn, it sometimes, potentially, sometimes like rains diamonds. The loudest noise ever. Like recorded? Uh, it was actually two black holes crashing into each other. The collision of two black holes, which created a gravita gravitational wave that reached 1,110 decibels. The sound wave was so powerful that it could have destroyed anything in its path. Uh, like a supernova. And even reshaped galaxies. Way more complicated than Apollo. <laughs> but if all goes well, um, they, I think uh, Elon wants to have starships on the moon in 2026. Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. Today, I'm joined with special guest host crash of the coming soon podcast called you're not gonna say your podcast name uh the war cash yeah. so he's here today to uh talk war in space yesterday we watched the uh spacex test launch of starship starship test flight five where they the mechazilla tower caught the booster which was crazy and now we're about to watch the Europa Clipper mission. Um, we're, uh, we're actually watching Tim Dodd's stream of NASA right now. So let me turn this down a little bit. Apparently there's a, there's a little bit of an issue. But so today, Crash, we're going to talk space, war stuff. Sound good? Uh-huh. You got to talk, man. Okay. <laughs> Just okay? Yeah. So you were asking me before this episode started recording, you were asking me how the uh, Falcon 9 heavy, or the Falcon Heavy is going to get the Europa Clipper to Europa, right? Yeah. So apparently uh, NASA wanted to use, are you familiar with the SLS? What? Are you familiar with SLS, the Space Launch System? No. No. Um, Tori Bruno is the, the president, and now I can't even think of the name of the organization. It's um, I got I got that stuff for Cooper a couple years ago. Remember that when uh, Tori Bruno was talking to me? He was supposed to send you stuff. Oh, no, your birthday's coming up. Yeah. I talked to him on Twitter or X. What stuff? Remember, like, the stickers, and I think he got, like, a shirt and some other stuff, like a little swag bag, NASA stuff. Anyways. Anyways, um, they were supposed to launch initially on SLS, and apparently, um, if you if they would have launched with SLS because SLS is a slightly more powerful rocket than the Falcon Heavy is, uh, there's a three year transfer, uh, basically a direct flight to Jupiter if they would use the more powerful rocket, but because they're using Falcon Heavy rather than uh, SLS, they're going to have to use uh, what are called gravity assists. Do you know what a gravity assist is? No. So they're going to launch, and then over the next couple months, the the clipper is going to fly out, and then it's going to come back around Earth and Mars and use a gravity assist. So essentially, they're going to go out really far, and then they're going to come back and then speed up using Earth's gravity and then speed up using Mars's gravity, and that's going to fling them out to Jupiter. So is the, is this why they're going? They're sending a uh, a satellite to Europa. Is it because there's like water? Yeah, they think that there's a uh, deep ocean underneath Europa. They think Europa's uh, ice crust. And it's like yeah. The, the Here we go. Here. Sorry, we're watching the launch real quick. Sweet. Uh, 
All right, so while this is launching, um, for those of you that are unfamiliar, we're a pretty big space family and, over uh, here. Is it beca also because Europa can, like, like, stretch? Yeah, so they think that the theory is, and I watched a Veritasium video. You might, Did you watch that one with me? Yeah. The Veritasium video about yeah. the squeezing the ball? Yeah. So they think that it might support the water there, might still be liquid under the ice caps. And it they might be ice. Yeah, and they believe that because of Jupiter's gravitational pull along with the other two moons, that the planet gets squeezed. Can, can people even be on the planet because it's still in the death zone, like the radiation? The, yeah, the radiation would kill humans. But they, but they think that life can survive underneath the ice because the ice potentially protects them from the radiation. That's the whole reason that this mission is going there. So what Cash and I learned in the video is that the moon, uh, Europa, that is, because they have, there's what, three, there's, they're called the JUICE. They're, uh, the mission that uh, the European Space Agency just launched, it's called the JUICE mission, the Jupiter Icy Moon Exploration or something like that. So anyways, they believe that because of the elongated orbit around Jupiter that the the moon actually gets squeezed and then releases and squeezed and releases. And I mean, obviously it's at a scale that you wouldn't be able to tell with your eyes, but it's enough that it causes friction in the internal core. And, of why, the, and how does even, I forgot how the, like the lines, uh, like form, like the electromagnetic magnetic radiation. Yeah. Earth has the same thing. That's what protects us from the sun. So it's from the, from the planet spinning, and it has the uh, the core has magnetic metals elements, and as the Earth spins, it creates a field. It's the same way that electricity is created, in in a lot of cases, most cases other than like solar. Um, so you take like a copper coil and you spin it around some magnets, and it generates electricity. That's how electric motors work. That's how electric generators work. So the planet does the same thing. Our planet creates a, a magnetic field that shields us. That's actually what creates the aurora. So when you see like the northern lights, the aurora borealis, yeah. that's because of the rays from the sun bouncing off of our magnetic field. Isn't that cool? Yeah. <clears throat> so that is to say that uh, the demonstration that Derek from Veritasium did was pretty cool. He took two balls, these like squishy balls with... Um, uh, a FLIR camera or a thermal camera of some kind. And he kept contact with the one that he wasn't squeezing, but with the other one, he kept squeezing it over and over again. And it showed that the actual friction and the, the motion or the pressure from squeezing the ball increased the ball's temperature over time. So they believe that the ice sheets surrounding the potential liquid ocean could support habitable life below the ice. So like primitive life on Earth back when there was like fish and lizards and nothing on land yet. So they're sending this mission, NASA sending this mission to go and map Europa, the entire surface. And they're going to be able to get something to the effect of like the size of this desk resolution on the, like this desk, they're going to be able to get images that small from flying over the planet, like four meters per second. So it's going to be fast. But as you said, the the radiation cache, yeah. it's so bad that if they just put the satellite in orbit of the moon, it would die in less than a month. But they want to keep it running for three years, so they have to run this really weird, we'll pretend that this remote here is Jupiter, right? And then Europa is going around like this. The the uh, sa the satellite is going to fly instead of around Europa and around Jupiter. It's going to go up like this and dive back down and then scan Europa and then fly back way high again every 14 days. It's going to go through a cycle of this. When it gets out of Europa or out of Jupiter's magnetic field, it's going to send all of its data back to Earth and then it's going to dive back down, scan the Moon, and then go back up again. And that's how they're planning on keeping it alive out there. I was, I was one time when I was watching this short, it was like the facts about Jupiter and Saturn. Mm -hmm. It was like, uh, 
it was like on Jupiter and Saturn, it sometimes potentially sometimes like rains diamonds. I could see that. I don't know if specifically that it's diamonds, but it might be. They have is their their planets their cores. And, wh- and what what what's it supposed to be like the the great giant red dot on a hurricane? Like the great giant red. The big red dot. Yeah, it's a hurricane. That is a hurricane mm-hmm. on on Jupiter. Yep. Why is it staying at the same place? It doesn't. It actually goes around, but. Because of all the bands and colors of the gas on the planet, it's the pictures all look the same. But it goes around, or it goes around Jupiter, it spins. If you actually look at some of the videos from back in the day, you can see the hurricane spinning, and you can see it traveling. So the gases are going this way, and, and the hurricane's going this way. Do you want to see it? You want me to pull up a video? Sure. All right. You can you can continue talk. Yeah. See, he's got microphone discipline already. You can just move it. Just pull it. However you want. There you go. All right. Let me. I'll pull this up real quick. So, when did you start getting excited about space? Was it uh, because of me? No, it was because I kind of like sci-fi because it looks cool, and I like outer space. And, yeah. And yeah. Do you think we're gonna be uh, China back to the moon? Possibly. All right, we got, looks like a video from Hubble. So, let me mute this so we don't get a copyright strike. What's happening here? So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just giving you facts about it. So it says, it says the spot's getting smaller, actually, by a thousand kilometers per year. But the damn thing is so big <laughs> that it's kind of imperceivable to people with telescopes of the human eye. A, a hundred, a hundred kilometers on Jupiter is like a meter here. So if you could imagine a hurricane as big as they are shrinking by a meter you're looking at the radar and you're like, that just, that still looks like a hurricane. It doesn't look any different to me. So that was a, that was a bad example of a video. I was really thinking that this is, says it's shaking. Let's do video animation. Very red spot rotation animation. There we go. Yeah. So it looks like the Clipper mission's doing just good. Re- just doing oh, one of those. That's yeah, crazy, isn't it? Oh, it's from NASA. Yeah, why does it only have 40? Only 40 likes. What they have? 8.6 thousand views. Six years ago? It's a, yeah, it just says it's looping animation. So it's probably just for educational purposes. It's not really. Yeah. yeah. Um, just, uh, what about this? Is this motionarray.com. Let's see how theirs is. Oh, this looks like it's something, yeah. This is an animation that you can download to use for your own purposes. But see how these bands, see how they're moving this way? And the storm is moving this way? Yeah, because it's like, like, it's like going, like, yeah. it's, that's what, the clouds that's what hap- go this way. That's what happens in our atmosphere, too. You just can't see it. Yeah, it's like, that's a fast thing, you know, it's like, like this is a car and that's the air and it's mm-hmm. going. So yeah, that was can't really find if anybody's got a good example, yeah. Yeah. drop it in the comments. Let us let us know so we can we can check it out. Uh JPL, let's see here. NASA Jet Jet Propulsion Laboratory, what you got for us? Plunge animation. How do we start this animation? animation. Yeah, why isn't it? Hello. We got a picture, but not an animation. Yeah. How do we go? Close this out. Maybe if we scroll down. So we're T plus 10 minutes into the Europa Clipper mission. 
everything looks nominal. S SpaceX, for some reason, didn't stream this themselves. NASA streamed it, but SpaceX themselves, Tim Dodd's trying to pull it up right now. Oh, no, he's looking at his own stuff. He's doing his own, own merch information right now. Click the image for animation. Okay, there we go. Is this one going to work? Play. Is this supposed to be going into it? Yeah. Their website's not very good. Photo or JPL, NASA, come on. Like you guys have money. You can afford to <laughs> altitude. Oh, so it's showing you your altitude. Okay. Let's pause this real quick and let it let it preload the stream buffer. This is cool. Um, so yeah, so this has been obviously a different episode than usual because Nona is out yeah. sick ish. Wait, what? She's sick? She's sick ish. She's just she's tired from traveling. So yeah. it's just you and I. Yeah. Good. Well this is come on, come on, NASA. We want like the exaggerated like we want it we want people to understand what they're looking at here. This is just this is just colored clouds. <laughs> So that's another not good one. Anyways, what other questions did you have about it, Cash? Uh, it's like about the the dot, like the hurricane. Yeah. It's like why is it like so big? And I don't know how it formed the air. Well, do you know what the the uh, Coriolis effect is? What? So when the, it's what causes hurricanes here on Earth as well and all of our weather. So as the planet spins, because – so if we, we don't have a ball here, but if, I, if we had a ball, I could demonstrate it to you. So when a ball spins – wish I could go get a ball right now. There's a ball right there. Grab that one. That'll make, this will make it easy. All right. We got a dog, a dog ball toy to demonstrate. So pretend this is our planet here, right? Okay. And the, the planet's spinning, right? So it's spinning in one constant speed, but the, per, the perceived speed here, right, is slower than the perceived speed here. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the person, if there was a person right here spinning around, they feel like they're going slower than the person that's up here, even when the rotation is the same speed. Actually, think, is he showing the same thing? Oh, no, he's talking about the angle for the, the launch. So, as you, as you notice, Cash, all of the, all the gases and stuff in our atmosphere, right? So, they're, they also observe the same thing. So, they have friction from the planet and then atmospheric friction and everything like that. So, as, as the planet spins and the clouds are traveling and all the weather and stuff is traveling with it, they're traveling at different speeds. So it gets as high pressures and low pressures built up, build up weather currents and things like that get sucked into each other. And that's what causes clouds, causes the evaporation of the water to, you know, form clouds and draft updrafts and everything like that causing our rain. So that's why like the moon doesn't have weather or an atmosphere or anything because it's tidally locked. It doesn't spin. It just goes around the earth, always facing the earth. In one, one way. Um, I saw this another fact about space. It, uh, well, everyone should know this that a galaxy isn't a solar system because a galaxy is like this and like this. Mm -hmm. And like, but if we swap our sun with a smaller sun but hotter, because there's another solar system with a Red dwarf? No, not a red dwarf. It's a purple dwarf. Purple dwarf? Yeah, it's it's hotter than the sun and our sun and smaller. Mm -hmm. If we swap out, we're gonna this is, the water's gonna just evaporate like evaporate like, mm -hmm. and we're gonna evaporate like ten seconds. So everything would just be melting except the one. Except Jupiter and Saturn and the ones far away. Yeah. And also, Rod. Hmm. Did 
So I watched a video the other day. Well, you and I watched a video about that that corridor made regarding Pluto being a dwarf planet, right? Yeah. Still planet, but dwarf planet. And one of the things, one of the criteria for planethood, if you want to call it that, planethood. is that the body has to clear all other similar sized bodies from its orbit, mm -hmm. right? To become a planet. So technically we have other planets beyond even Pluto that are even farther out. They're just having cleared all of the other asteroids and other moon sized planets or whatever from their orbits. So there's a bunch of stuff out there, a bunch of stuff that. Do you know this like fake planet that's in our like asteroid belt? It's, do you know it's, it's do you know it's called like Sirius? Mm -hmm. It's what if we send people to Sirius or they probably, a satellite? Well, they fly stuff through there all the time. You have to fly through the asteroid belt to get to Jupiter. Yeah, but how, then why don't they first check Sirius if there's any any like water? So they under? do all of these telescopes and things that we have in space and on the ground. They check for different signs and signatures. They can tell by radiation that's given off and how light bounces off the planet, all kinds of things like that. They can tell if it contains the things that potentially would hold or support life as we know it. And they haven't found anything like that in those places. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, and what? And I still remember that one time that NASA sent that like, s that like s satellite to pick up like a, like a comet, like a meteor, like right there and right there next to each other. And it took like a two year journey and it, like it was about to, and then it went. The one that slammed into it? Yeah. It went. The, uh, Oh my gosh, I know the name of it too and I can't think of it. They're sending another satellite there to take pictures and potentially take samples of the crash site. I thought they already did take samples. No, they're sending or, another one. Or did it, or the that first one, one ex yeah. crashed in it, in it. Yep, that one, that one was intended to just punch it and see how far they could knock it off course. Why would they want to knock it off course? They just want to know if it's possible. They want to know if, so if you have something, say you have two things like this, right? Look, say you have two things that are traveling like this, right? Mm -hmm. Really, really fast and really, really far away. And maybe one of them is coming right towards us. If you hit one and deflect it a little bit over time, so let's start way back here. Say they're going the same, the same, and then you hit it. Over time, it starts becoming exaggerated. So now it's flying all the way over this way instead of flying straight like it used to be. That's all they were trying to do. They wanted to know if it's even possible. So now they're tracking where it's flying and they want to send something back and they want to check it out. I know the, I know the name of it. It's an initialism. It's like, no, it's not stomp. You know what it's called. What's it called? Should we what? look it up? What? Oh, yeah. In Inish. Dart. What? It's it's called Dart. Dart. I think it's D A R D A A R T. Dart. Dart mission. Double asteroid redirect test. Hey, look. Ah. Uh, type type in Dart mission and on it'll Google, and it'll show like a satellite yeah. crashing into something. The screen and went. The satellite crashed into my screen and knocked my screen sideways. Mm -hmm. So yeah, double asteroid redirect te redirection test is what it's called, the DART mission. So they're sending another one back, and I believe it's ESA is sending something. DART, DART mission follow-up. Uh, in collaboration with ESA, in the collaborating project ESA, blah, blah, plan to spacecraft that was launched to Didymos in October 20. So it already, it just launched. Probably. It'll be there in 2026. 
It's carrying two CubeSats. It's just, it's a recon thing, blah, blah, blah. Let's see here, double asteroid. Uh, ESA comes next. So yeah, they launched on the 26th of September, so just a couple weeks ago, actually. It launched a couple weeks ago on September 26th. So they're sending, they're sending two satellites, two small CubeSats. And so that'd be cool. Does it tell where these are? Where they are right now? Yeah. Um, what's the name of this mission? After NASA's asteroid, Hera comes next. Hera. Mission location. We're we at on time. We're at 24 minutes. All right. Uh, the binary asteroid system of Didymos and Dimorphos, uh, which is in our solar system, the SA Hero spacecraft launched on. No, this says October. Like oh, I bet it was delayed. I bet it was originally supposed to be for September, but they, the, with the hurricanes and stuff, they had to probably shift it around. So that's why there was no like video for it. No, there's probably video. We just didn't watch it. It's really weird because SpaceX doesn't stream on YouTube anymore, but they only just updated the X app or launched the X app on TVs and stuff so you can watch videos and live streams. It's not very good, though. To be completely honest with you, it's not It's not anything like YouTube. Elon oh, yeah. knows this. He has to know this. Uh, do you know the Lattice Noise Con? Lattice Noise what? You know the loudest noise ever caught. Like recorded? Yeah. No. Uh, it was actually two black holes crashing into each other. Oh, collapsing? Yeah, right. Sucking into each other? Yeah. Who recorded it? I don't know. It got recorded. It did? It, it, I think. How? Or is how? it just a theoretical thing? No. Someone said it. It was like. It was, it was like recorded, like, I know, like, are you sure, but how would you know if it is actually two black holes crashing, crashing into each other? What if it's just, like, two meteors just going? Probably the size of the gravitational waves. And, it, and the guy said, it's like, it's at, how much is 100 decibels? It's like a... Somebody screaming or like a jet engine? Probably more. It huh. sounded like... Ee. Loudest noise Cough. ever. Recorded. It's probably not. That. It's probably something. Yeah, be careful. Don't hit the table. Oh, it's, just, it's the volcano. Well, this Krakatoa. says Krakatoa. 310 decibels per 3,000 miles away. That's crazy. Uh, ever recorded in space. Let's try that. Space. The loudest sound ever recorded in the universe, the collision of two black holes, which created a gravita gravitational wave that reached 1,110 decibels. The sound wave was so powerful that it could have destroyed anything in its path. Uh, like a supernova. And even reshaped galaxies. Supernovas. Yeah. Sound waves can hurt. Seriously. No, not just your ears. You can actually feel them. You know when, uh, when you see the, the rocket exhaust? Yeah. From the launches, yeah, you know how you see it come to a point, and they, it looks like little diamonds. Yeah, those are called mock diamonds because that's the gas is actually reaching the speed of sound and exploding on itself, and you can feel that and you can see it. You've seen in the videos those pressure waves, where you see like you know dirt move and everything like that. So if it could change. Oh, uh, like galaxies shape, it'll cut us at least are the black holes if they, like, mm -hmm. it's probably like, these are the, these are the galaxies, so it's probably like. You know when you go to the pool yeah. and you have like some floaties and then you hit the water between them? Yeah. That's kind of what, and then everything kind of moves around? Does that make sense? Yeah. That's basically what, what could happen. Um. What if, what if a another galaxy collides in another galaxy? What if another, they I, do. We, it, 
I think we're we're approaching another one. Or, the, or it's approaching us, one of the two. Where? It'll never happen in our life. Yes. It'll, every Everything will be dead and gone on earth before it ever happens. Yeah. But yeah, they do. It can, things pass by each other. So you could have orbital capture where planets might become part of a dis- different system. We might gain new planets. We might lose planets. Uh, things could crash into each other. Also... Possibly a, a space event might happen. It's probably, uh, NASA's probably going to possibly send people to a whole other solar system. Probably, but not, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. Yeah. They have to figure out human hibernation or something, and some also, sort of colony. And I think it was like a red gas dwarf like called Trappist. Is Trappist it? one? Yeah. And it's like, also, another space event. I was like, "There's gonna, be, there's gonna be like a asteroid, a meteor, like thirty-two thousand kilometers above us." There's one that's passing through Earth's atmosphere right now. My buddy's been taking pictures of it out in Las Vegas. Where? Oh, like, Las Vegas. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta be careful. Uh, what? What did? What did the people? pictures look like let me see if i can pull it up yeah but it's a, if it's smaller it's gonna be bigger it's bigger than the one that <clears throat> killed all the dinosaurs there you go yeah we might see we might see a thing like that big the tail what you talking about the tail no wait it's comet a3 is what its name is well we might the meteor we might see is like the picture, like that was like that. We might see a bigger one, like that. Where do you think that's going to come from? I don't know. Probably from the asteroid belt. Comet A3 tracker. Let's use that. Careful. Um, that's for Sunday. Let's see the sky live. What's this side about? What in the world is going on here? Um, yeah, but we're, like, what is happening? What is, what am I looking at? I don't know. Is I think these are all of the asteroids. Right. But, but is this supposed to be, okay, Greenwich, UK, Object A3, open sky map. Where are we supposed to be is what I'm, like, is this us looking at the sky? I think this is, uh, see there. No, this is A3. Probably somewhere right there. Somewhere now, let's see here, comma A3 tracker for tonight. Let's Forbes of all places. <laughs> all right, update. October 14th, 2024, that is today. If it's cloudy where you are, the virtual telescope will be live streaming the comet. Blah, blah, blah. 1 p.m. Eastern time. So it's already, it's going to fly over us potentially in 25 minutes. Um, hey, we won't, yeah, we won't be able to see it in daytime, I don't think. Uh, yeah, come on. Come on. People can't hear you if you're walking around. There's no clouds outside. Careful. Let's see here. Currently rising in the night sky immediately after sunset. If you find it, here's how to photograph it. Blah, blah, blah. Best from the northern hemisphere. None of this is, none of this is good information. How to locate the comet. There we go. West 25 degrees from the sun in Virgo. Time 45 minutes after sunset where you are. You magnitude 0.7. What is this? I don't need the calculator. The comet will be visible close to the western horizon about 45 minutes after sunset, setting around an hour and 20 minutes later. And what did it say? 25 degrees. Okay. 
So it's going to be really low along. We might not be able to see it from here because we're too close to other stuff. But we can try. And there's a lot of light pollution here where we live. Probably would have been better in Leland. Yeah. So, best time to see it. Um, we can we can try every day through October 21st, it says. And then it'll fade from the naked eye. Uh, Monday, October 14th and October 15th are likely the technical best evenings to see the comet. But since comet watching is entirely weather dependent, blah, blah, blah. All right, so we'll try that. We'll try and get some pictures and videos of it tonight. Uh-huh. We can probably find it on Sky Map on my on my phone. We'll try that later on our own time, not on podcast time. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about space wise? We didn't talk about any war stuff. Yeah, I only want to talk about space. You only want to talk about space? Yeah. Do you got anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up? Um. What? Hold on. Thank you. Thank you. He's thinking. You can talk about other should stuff, I, right? Uh, I think. Should I do what mom, what mom and I do to each other? Sure. That's what people do when, like, if they're telling a joke, say they're doing, like, a comedy, stand-up comedy, and nobody laughs and nobody claps, they play crickets. Mm. But it also means, like, there's dead air because we're not talking. This is Cash's first time on a full episode, though. Mm. He's got a... He'll, he'll watch this. He'll get his AAR. Um... He's thinking. Uh, what if there's... You trying to think of a hypothetical? What? You're just like making up a scenario? I'm or you trying th- to think of something. All right, why don't I ask you questions instead? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. What is your favorite rocket of all time so far? The one that had a big, big orange booster with another booster booster and that weird. Space the space shuttle? Yeah. Those are really cool. That was when I was a kid. We used to watch the replay and like the live when I was in school. That's why I'm surprised you guys don't ever watch SpaceX stuff at school. Yeah, but but the one was like when they could like a bolt went just like the one that exploded. Yeah. Uh, Columbia. Yeah, the Columbia. Yeah. You know why that happened? Is it from a like nail? One of the ceramic heat shields broke off and it hit the side punctured it I think there were two the, the Columbia disaster and then was it Endeavor what are the let's see here what space shuttles exploded space shuttle Columbia on, as it re-entered yeah so they made it to space. But did all of the could not die? Yeah. On the way back. Um, it was the second space shuttle mission to end in disaster after Challenger crew in 86. So there were two. I was right. Challenger crew. Mm-hmm. And that was... Uh, so the space shuttle was important because it was reusable. And now... The one that had... The one that was attached on the back Mm -hmm. to the big booster. Mm -hmm. So now we have a new space plane. Which is what? The X, X 70 something. X 70. X space plane. X. X 37 is what it's called by Boeing. Yeah. And it's a drone, I believe. Orbital test vehicle. Yeah, see, this is it inside of, what fairing is that? I can't tell, I can't tell what fairing, it looks like the the Falcon 9 fairing. No, Atlas 5, there we go. Oh, there, yeah, it said. Okay, I like this to Saturn V. It, it did launch in the, on the Falcon 9. I was right. The other 
Saturn V? Yeah, Saturn V. Which mission of the Saturn V did you like the most? Yeah, people can't hear you if you're not by the microphone, bud. How much missions did we go on? Um, I don't know. A lot. <laughs> we don't know. Let's look it up. Saturn V rockets. Um, huh? Was it just the moon? Yeah, I believe they were all moon missions. It, not all of them landed on the moon, but I believe they were all uh, several missions, including Apollo 4, Apollo 6, Apollo 8, Apollo 10, Apollo 11, Apollo 12, Don't. Skylab, and Apollo Soyuz. Oh, yeah. On, on the moon, there's 98 feces. Feces? Yeah. Poop? Yeah. 98 pieces? We just left it there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We got to go to this uh, museum in D.C. sometime because I know somebody, yes, I I know somebody that works there. He, his name's uh, um, John, right? I don't know. He follows me on Twitter. We talked about it. Yeah. It doesn't tell you the exact. I wish, it, I wish this information was a lot easier to uh, find. Feces. Like, just answer the exact no, question that I want. Feces. You're just still talking about poop? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so you like the space shuttle? You like the Saturn V? What What do you like about them? That they're cool. Just because it's like nostalgic, or because you think the missions were cool, or they look missions, cool? They look cool. They, they look cool. Yeah. Do you think anything will ever look cool like that again? I don't know. You don't Possibly. Know? We've got a lot of missions that are going to be flying to people to the moon with the Artemis program. What's that? It's the next moon landing program. What are they using? Is are they using like the ones that they used to, to get to the moon, or is it the what are the what spaceship are they using to get to the moon? So there's supposed to be a couple different things going on. So they want to launch. They want to launch a uh, a space station around the moon for everybody to dock with. And then they want to launch a couple starships and there's going to be some other landers. So SLS, which is like Boeing and everybody, the, the they're not SLS. That's, um, oh my gosh. I can't think of the name of the company. Who's pull up Tori Bruno real quick. Tori Bruno, ULA, United Launch Alliance. There we go. That's all the government contractors that work on one vehicle together and SLS is under ULA. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a couple different lander vehicles and uh, part of Starship. One of the Starship models will be one of the moon landers. I think there's two more. I think SLS is going to carry one or it might just be the dock. So they're going to have to have, they're going to do a bunch of really cool things. They're going to put a couple of vehicles into space that'll be refueling tankers. So there will be starships that carry just fuel up to the uh, up to like the Carmen line or up to space into orbit, and then another starship will dock with it to refuel in space and then fly to the moon to the moon space station, and then from there they'll get into their lander vehicle and go down to the moon and then fly back up to the moon space station, get back in starship and fly back to Earth. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of moving parts, isn't it? Yeah. Way more complicated than Apollo. <laughs> but if all goes well, um, they I think uh, Elon wants to have starships on the moon in 2026. You think so they can the do it? The starships, like when they got... The yeah. Planet. Yeah, the booster that got caught, yeah. Yeah. That was crazy to watch, wasn't it? We watched it live. Him and I, we sat here on the couch and watched it live happen. When I when I get a computer and I get Kirby a space thing, Kerbal? yeah, I I'm gonna reenact the like thing. Do they have those parts? Do you think? The guy that we watched when he was like watching the thing. Oh, Scott one. Manley. Yeah, and he went. He he, a couple and he said a couple years ago he went. Kerbal Space Program. Yeah, he went. Mecca. Zilla. 
Kerbal Space Program. Yeah, there's like an add-on or something. Did it? Yeah, somebody did it. Wait, what? A mod for a Kerbal Space SpaceX Mozilla caching system. Cool. Maybe we'll have to try that out someday. Yeah. This came out three years ago already. Holy three cow. Years? Yeah. How did he know this would be happening? They they announced it a long time ago. Of oh, adding the Yeah. But this looks I mean it looks different. This is like really primitive compared to what it really looks like. Crazy. All the downloads and stuff. Yeah, well let's check it out. Cool. Well remember they can't hear you, bud. All right, so anything else you want to talk about? Or are we going to jump off? I don't know. I don't know? Why do you like this? You like how you like what we talked about? Yeah. And. All right. Yeah. Well, for Mr. Crash here, I'm Andrew. This has been a, a special filler episode while Nona's out. So. No, we'll be back in a future episode. We'll see. Well, I'm, I mean, she will be back. <laughs> uh, but I just, I can't promise which episode is going to be because I don't know how many I'm going to record before she comes back on the show. So thanks for watching. Cash, thanks for coming on and helping me. Mm -hmm. uh, just know, huh? And, and yeah. you definitely did not say my real name. No, I said Crash. I heard my real name. Uh, what kind of face should we give you? Like the smiley face emoji? No. No? It's okay. Oh. It's okay. All right. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.